Hello everyone, I just wanted to make a quick short video on traffic engineering metrics and utilizing TE metrics uh, with constraint-based routing. Uh, so just go over a couple notes here. Constraint-based routing with OSPF and ISIS. This involves the flooding of additional information that is collected in the TE database. So that's our type 10 LSAs. Uh, T metrics are used just to influence the path selection as opposed to depending on your internal routing protocol such as ISIS or OSPF. And CSPF must be enabled on the LSP. And the algorithm, again, the CSPF algorithm is ran at the head end router, uh, sending the path message, and that that node will consult the T, the TED, the Traffic Engineering Database, uh, for the appropriate metrics. And so, just a quick outline here of the configuration of uh, the TE metrics. They're set at the configured router MPLS context, and then you got to drill into the LSP itself, enable the use of TE metrics alongside CSPF inside of the LSP. And I made a quick note here, uh, remember that the LSPs are unidirectional. So this, you know, that you got to make sure you craft this stuff right. In an ideal world, you would use all TE metrics uh, instead of depending on TE metrics as well as your IGP metrics. That will definitely get messy if you're you know, doing both. Um, so keep that in mind. And then uh, in a future video, I'll go over admin groups and share risk link groups constraints uh, and so those are just a little bit more um, tools that we can use for traffic engineering there's also hop limits and strict paths and all sorts of fun stuff so let's go ahead and show the topology here so uh, I'm gonna uh, go ahead and create an LSP from router 5 to router 6 as we saw in the previous video and I believe that's still created in my lab so we'll go over that show the path detail and then we're going to enable the use of TE metrics and we're going to make our path go a different route than what IGP would decide to do so we're going to go router 5, router 1, router 7, router 2, router 6 so this is going to add quite a bit to the hop um, and uh, tack on some totaling to the metric. However, that is the path that we, as the network engineer, decided that we should utilize. Um, so we'll apply our TE metrics and see what we can do here. So here's my router 5. So we'll go ahead and go to configure router MPLS. And here is my LSP. So LSP to router 6. Uh, CSPF uh, use of TE metrics is not enabled so in here we will decide that router the, the interface to router 3 we will go ahead and up that metric so interface to router 3 so you can see you can do an info detail here and there's no TE metrics so we'll just do TE metric say we make this uh, we'll just say 500 Okay, so this interface now is labeled as a 500 metric. Um, so if we want to verify that, we'll just go ahead and show router OSPF. We'll consult our OSPF opaque database of type 10 LSAs. Uh, this is different than the link state database that OSPF is normally advertising. Um, and our advertising router is going to be us. Show a detail here. So here is our traffic engineer metric of 500. Um, 1053.5, that is our interface, local IP address of that interface. So you can see that's the, the TE metric there, as opposed to our, our route table. So here are the IGP metrics. All right, so back to the LSP. So we'll go to the LSP. And so let's just enable a GP, uh, TE metrics on interface router one. 
Let's paste it around. TE metric. Let's do 100. LSP router 6. So CSPF, use TE metric. Please. So now you can see CSPF use of TE metrics is enabled. Uh, so we want to think about what's going to happen here. So router 5 will not go to router 3. It will go to router, router 1. But now router 1 will have to decide. Or, well, router 5 will decide this uh, consulting the CSPF algorithm but from the T TED database there. But router 1, we want to basically want to say don't take router two, uh, router 1 to router 2 or router 1 to router 3. So let's change those interfaces just to be sure. We'll go ahead and configure router and PLS. Okay, so our interface, interface to router 3. So let's make sure we got our PLS SP to router 6 path. So what does our path detail look like now? So we're going 5, 1, 2, 6. And just a quick review here, uh, the flags, this is a detours available and this is a node protections available. Remember those flags. So 5126 is the actual hops on this LSP. 5, 1, 2, 6. Terminating router, that's the far end. Um, we are going to engineer this LSP to send traffic to 5, 1, 7, 2, 6. Ideally, IGP would never choose that path unless something was broken in the middle. So let's continue over to router 1. So our interface to router 3, we'll say TE metric 500, interface to router 2, TE metric 500. Okay, so let's go back to router 5. Let's look at our opaque database here from our advertising router one. The database advertising router 10, 10, 10, 1. Detail. So here is one interface 500. So just, just as a review there. Um, now what we want to do is Resignal this LSP at the moment. I believe this will go 7 2. Uh, so let's see what we can do here. So tools perform res router resignal plus resignal LSP to router 6 path. Path is loose. So now we just resignaled our LSP path detail. Okay, so look at that. We are going five one seven two six. Let's bring that screen back up. Five one seven two six. Now. Like I said in a few minutes ago, we LSPs are unidirectional. I, I you need to drill that into your head for uh, utilizing MPLS. It's uh, it always comes up. You got to remember unidirectional. That's what an LSP is signaling itself. So uh, let's see what this configuration looks like on this side. I don't know if I have an LSP. Well, so I do, so show router and PLS. Nope. Path detail. So you can see this LSP from 6 to 5 is taking a completely different route back. So 6, 4, 3, 5. 
Um, so that's something you got to watch out for. Um, that's why I was saying earlier, you know, in an ideal world, you maybe want to stick to either using traffic engineering metrics across your entire network um, or really carefully crafting your paths and your metrics across your network. Um, I can see this being a, quite the problem if you're setting something up and it will take a really weird route back or something you were not anticipating and then create a further problem. Um, so there you have it, a quick video on, on using TE metrics with MPLS.